Hello everybody and welcome back to the FM24 50 plus 1 save with MS Dwy Duisberg. I'll, I'll keep trying, I'll keep trying. Um, Early season form hasn't quite continued, we're still in second place, but Dresden are just sort of pulling away. Let's go and have a look. Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the save, and maybe I was being a bit pessimistic, because we are actually playing still very well. 14 games played, 9 wins, 2 draws, 3 losses, 17 goal difference. And we are only five points off top, and if we win today's game, then we will only be two points behind Dresden, which isn't too bad. But Munich are putting on a bit of pressure. They are no level of points with us. Essen are up there as well, our rivals. They are only a point behind us, but both have played one game more, as have Munster, who have played one game more, but are two points behind us. So... It's all pretty close, and Unterhaching, who uh, we beat in the last episode, are playing Urza Bijau, which is an amazing, amazing name. But uh, they're also sort of in the hunt. If they win that game, they'll be on 29 points as well. So it's looking pretty close. No runaway leader at the moment, although if we lose, then Dresden are five points clear. So, yeah, lots, uh, lots to worry about there. But by the time you're watching this episode, the vote for the final four is out on the community channel and in the discord so go and have your votes the top two will be voted in in january as club cultures and things that we have to focus on so that will be very exciting um i've taken a few of the ideas that have been suggested as well and parked them for the summer vote because i think we're gonna have a bit more time in the summer there'll be a bit more um understanding of what this means and how it all works so some of them have been uh, some of them are really good and what we've done is the vote is for all the ones that we can't decide or don't have enough likes to be put into action and then anything that has got loads of likes on the video is just coming in as an action straight away because it's sort of shown that people want to see that and it's enjoyable so if you haven't seen your selection in a vote so far it doesn't mean it's never going to be enacted because eventually i'm just going to top them all up and they'll all be put in a vote for for you to see every single option so hopefully that sums that up today we're playing english dad and then we're going on to play i can't remember who we're playing after english dad sandhausen that's it we're playing english dad and then sandhausen but uh, results haven't been amazing to be honest we played Uta Harching in the last episode we beat them but then we lost to Saarbrücken we followed that up with a win against Armenia Bielefeld and then drew with our, our rivals Essen they got a very early penalty we equalized very early on as well but after that we did struggle a little bit and then we lost to SV Waldhof who had just appointed a new manager Benjamin Girth got sent off in the 75 minutes which didn't help and we equalized uh, we scored a, a late consolation in the 93rd but even though we went down to 10 men, we still played reasonably well. So, yeah, not too bad, to be honest. It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. For our first season at the club, I think we're doing pretty well. Uh, goals then, top goal scorers or Pidel in seven, Izquierdo with seven, uh, five for Kopke, and then a handful of people on three or below. Assist-wise, Nicholas Sterling has got six. Uh, Chindu Ikine has got six. We've got three there for Izquierdo, so he is showing his strength at this sort of level as well. And I think we're going to get him back in the squad for this one. He was rested previously. Um, we have had a few bit of trouble with injuries and little knocks and stuff like that. Nothing major so far, touch wood, but uh, hopefully we get through that as well. And then going back and looking at the competition... If we look at the three-leaguer, uh, Chindu Akine is the best player in the league at the moment, which is very good. He's top with average rating. He's third in assists. He's top or joint top with player of the matches as well. So plenty of things to be happy about with him. Although he is also looking to explore options at the end of his contract. So probably won't be here next year, no matter if we go up. They normally have made their mind up by that point. But anyway, let's get into the game against English Dad and uh, we'll go in there. They are bottom of the league, so I, I'm expecting a win. Here we go then into the game. MSV Doisberg lining up in our 3 5 2. Bitter Senga Mayer at the back. Mugati and Ikene, Yander, Noel. And then we've got Piedel in behind. Is Quiedo and Konig up front. A 4 4 2 for English Dad 04. As uh, Lorenz looks pretty pretty handsome at the back there. Just got to point that out. Um, MSV Doisberg sits in second place. And English Dad are at the bottom of the league. So, yes, expecting a win. I've told the players we're expecting a win. I'm expecting us to go and dominate this game. And uh, see how we can get on. We're even going to start on positive to try and take control. And again, I've forgot to turn the highlight speed down because I've been playing it off camera. And it's a good save from Funk. 
uh, in goal, which <laughs> got to love a bit of funk. And uh, we've got a corner. Noel is going to take this one back in the team in central midfield. Peedle into Akine, swings to the back post. May with a header over the bar. And we have been working on our set pieces in training, so hopefully we can see a little bit of profitability from that. But yeah, the votes are getting very close. In most votes, we have had just one runaway winner. So with the four final votes on the winner, two, the top two get put into action, I'm very interested to see how it, uh, how it all plays out because... Yeah, there are some really interesting ones in there. There's quite, there's a couple that are very similar, and there's one. Uh, oh, hello, Mouse is in, and he's hit the post. I don't know if Muller saved it. He did save it. It looks like he saved it onto the post. But um, yeah, the ones for that I've held back to be placed in for the summer are, are going to be really interesting. I think they're uh, they're going to be fun. Good claim from Muller in goal that one. His kit clashes with their kit. I don't like that. I do not like that at all. Come on, boys, we should be winning this. We actually seem to be playing better when we were on a balanced mentality, which doesn't really make sense. I don't know if this this system is working how I want it to work. Um, we're not really getting enough runners higher up the pitch. We're sort of very structured in our system. Um, oh, it's not Conning up front. I've started S Swen because he was moaning a lot. So, yeah, we've given him a chance now to prove to what he can do. Baron Magali were in well. Null into Piero, into Esquiero. Esquiero shoots off the underside of the bar and doesn't cross the line. How did that not go in? As uh, Mogalti is just pushed off the ball, it will be a throw-in uh, for us in the bottom corner. But good chance from Esquiero. Smashes the bar. And we really are struggling to create those clear-cut chances that I want. So I'm thinking potentially we do... We mix this up a little bit. It's a great hit from Peedle, and it's a good save from Funking Goal again. It is all us. We are playing well. We just need to make sure that we have a, a clinical a clinical striker, really, would be lovely. And that normally is is Quiedo, as Akini has got a lot of time and space to turn. Left-footed shot on Funk with an easy save, to be honest. It looked like it might be difficult for him, but it was a good save. So, yes, if you haven't voted yet, make sure to get your vote in, because it is the next episode... The, the voting will stop by the next episode, and that is when we're going to be going through it. So you've probably got the weekend to vote and uh, and have a look and get that done, because by I'll probably be recording it on Sunday. So there's your warning. There's your warning. Um, I don't like what I just saw. I don't like what I just saw. How can we change this up tactically? Let's dive into the tactics and see what we can do. I'm quite tempted to get you on attack as well, and then we will get a sort of five-channel attack, but... I don't want to leave us too too open. I think if we change you to a ball player so that you don't push wide, we'll have sort of more of a three a three at the back. Let's go wing back on attack. Now, Pledel can't really play back here, which is a bit of a concern. But we could push. Hmm, how do we want to do this? I want a five channel attack, but I don't know how to get the five channel attack. This is where it gets interesting. We'll leave it like that for now. Let's, in fact, let's get them forward. Let's say you can overlap. We can hold the ball up to try and overload the uh, the wing positions and see if that helps us because I think that could be pretty crucial. In a game that we are sort of dominating or at least being the better team, I wonder if we can change this to can you do focus of attacks. No, that's not what I want. Um, but the, well, the time's ticking down with absolutely nothing happening in this second half. Both teams sort of being even with each other. Okay, we're going to change this up slightly. We're going to put Izquierdo up front on his own. SEN is going to come off, and we're going to go for this. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, so SEN is on a 6.5, so yeah, not playing very well. We're going to bring on Mitchell Brink to come on in this role, and you're going to be an attacking midfielder on a... Ta oh, in fact, you want to be a shadow striker, even better. So we're going to have... This should give us a five-channel of attack, right? He pushes on, he pushes on, he pushes on, he pushes on, he pushes on. It's just whether this is going to be defensively strong enough. And uh, we're going to find out. We are going to find out. So a little change. We go for one up front with his Quieto pushing the line back. We're going to go up to positive as well. Immediately we have a good chance and we've got a corner. No, swings this one in. Header from May. It is 1-0. And normally when you make a change and you immediately create a good chance, it means that you've got something right in the game. So potentially a little change of system coming up. That five-channel attack is huge. No, swings it in and uh, it's headed away. De Tegan, they've got no one up there, so this sort of makes sense. Bitter into Yander. 
Yanda back to Bitter, out to Akini, into Piedel. Great turn, Piedel runs through, he shoots, it's a good save from Funk. It's been disallowed, what the hell? Have I turned replays off? I've turned replays, no, they're on. Why did that get disallowed? Oh, well, 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 we put a corner in. Why did that get disallowed? That was a goal from a corner. Goals, disallow goals. Let's put... Well, it wasn't offside, so it must have been handball or something. That's annoying. Piedel into my... The, the disallowed goal controversy uh, here. I don't know why that didn't count. That looked perfectly legit. Right, let's have a look who's tired. Uh, what fresh legs will leave. May's a bit tired, which is strange. Uh, Centre-back. Um, how are our full backs, our wing backs doing? Yeah, not too bad. Left wing backs not having a good game, so we'll bring, we'll bring on Cole for him. And yeah, to be honest, there's not much else. I think I'm just gonna I'm gonna change Akine for Felts just for fresh legs. I feel like some fresher legs running at defence maybe maybe what we need. And we'll take Casper Yander off for Nicholas Sterling as well. And just see if we can make this count. We have definitely, this change of system has definitely create, making us create a lot more chances. So let's give them the encouragement. Ten minutes to go. We are by far on top of this game. And we just need to make this work. 85 minutes gone. We just cannot seem to get that breakthrough at the moment. Mitchell Brink not having a good game in attacking midfield. And Thomas Peedle, let's take him off for Alabakir, which is a lot of pace. He's not great technically, but pace-wise, he will run at the defence. Uh, and he should do a good job. But 90 minutes gone, plus four to go. We've been the better team, but we just couldn't find the goal. We just couldn't find the goal. Izquierdo created three clear-cut chances for his teammates. And that none of them were put in. Their goalkeeper got man in the match, which sort of says it all. I want to I wanna try and keep morale up. I don't want to destroy morale just because we're not winning games. But to not beat the team bottom of the table, it puts us four points off top. That is disappointing. We've actually got a very long break. 13 days until the next game now against uh, Sandhausen as we uh, head into the end of... Oh, I hate when it doesn't put the lines in. When we uh, it doesn't split the months out. As we head into the end of November, we're taking on Sandhausen. And I think... I mean, it was obvious that we played better with that in that system, creating that system. We do have good strikers, but, um, well, Girth is out injured at the moment, actually. He's probably the best striker to play alongside is Quiedo. So I'm wondering if, while he's out, we don't use, we don't go for the strikers. But we, we've got, yeah, we've got options in attacking midfield, actually. So, potentially, let's let's start in that system that we, we sort of finished with. Let's go Shadow Striker, Shadow Striker. Wing back attack, and we'll just put you as a centre back. On de no, we won't. We'll put you as a ball player and defender because we do ha we do like to have a lot of the ball in here. So ball player, ball player, ball player. Wing, wing up, up, up. That's fine. And then we will just look for the look for the old overlap and see what we can do. So it'll be a tough game. Right. So we're back for the second game of the episode, and yeah, Dynamo Dresden. That they're four points clear. So we need Regensburg. To really give us a give us a bit of help here, if they can get points off Dresden, that would be lovely. We're taking on Sandhausen away from home. Uh, they're in eighth, so they are climbing up the table. They're not doing bad at all. But um, yeah, there was something that someone flagged to my attention, and that is in the league that non. We were wondering why Castaneda, right, the American, doesn't count as non-EU. Misc rules. Nations treated as EU. All European Free Trade Agent Association nations, South Korea, all European nations, Andorra, Australia, Canada, Israel, Japan, Monaco, New Zealand, San Marino, USA, and Ukraine are all counted as EU in the uh, third league, third Bundesliga. So, yeah, I'm excited about that. It, it does open up a few more options for potential signings, but on transfers and signings there's a reason I've not gone and made any more signings since episode one because in episode one I just wanted to you know fill out the squad a little bit and make a signing but then I was like I'm not going to do anything on signing or setting up my own scouts I've let I've set up a few focuses but I've let the director of football go and sort out the scouting because I wanted to wait to see what gets voted in for January to see if there's anything that's going to affect where I should send scouts, what I should be looking for, what the squad determination or makeup needs to be. So, yeah, that will be pretty interesting indeed. But back to the football. 
We are taking on Sandhausen, and I need to sort out the team. So we're going to try this new system, uh, and we're going to start on positive. I feel like we should be positive in every game we go into because we are playing some good stuff. So let's go and pick the team together. Vincent Muller in goal. He is our undisputed number one. I think he is anyway. I mean, we could give Dennis Smarch a game or Maximilian Brown, but Vincent Muller does seem to be the best keeper we have. Right, on the right-hand side will be Joshua Bitter. Uh, in the middle will be Senga, and on the left will be May. And then we go into the right midfield spot. It has to be, if he's fit and available, Chendu Ikine has to play on the right-hand side. The left is a little bit more open. We're actually going to start Rolf Felcher out there today because uh, he, I, I think experience is key. Mugalti has let us down a little bit in recent times, so I think we'll go with him. Um, again, Kasper Yanda, if he's available and he's fit, generally has to play. And he's such an all-rounder. We leave him as a central midfielder on automatic and he sort of matches what mentality we've got. Next to him, we'll start Marvin Knoll again in that position. And then in behind the strikers, we'll go with Pidel. And we are going to start the young American, Castaneda, with Jose, Jose Izquierdo up front. We'll make sure Pooch is on the bench because he can fill in when Castaneda gets a little bit tired. Uh, Mitchell Brink can go on there as well. Girth is back from injury so he can go on the bench. We'll put Nicholas Sterling in there. We'll put McGolty on the bench and we'll have Brown as the goalkeeper. Fleckstein on the bench as well. Leaves two more spaces. Um, let's go with Alabakir who scored for Jordan in the international break which is always nice. And in case we need to have some goals, let's put another striker on the bench. Put Kopke on there as a poacher. So this is how we're lining up. A slight tweak to the system. Um, it seemed to get results in that last game against Englishstad, but we just couldn't put the ball in the back of the net. So hopefully today our strikers bring their shooting boots, and I want to win every single match. So let's get into it. Sandhausen lining up in a 4-3-3 holding midfielder. Um, Evina, Otto and Stolls up front for them. They're in decent form. They've not lost in the last five. Whereas we're in a bit of patchy form. Loss, win, draw, loss, draw. Yeah, finding the back of the net is the problem at the moment. But hopefully we can sort that out in this game as uh, Fuchs is on the ball. Back to Lau for Sandhaus. And we're in our away green kit. Stoles comes forward into Otto, into Mulhing. Mulhing is tackled well by Bitter, but it falls to Avina. Cuts it back and uh, Akini with a long clearance. And uh, that was the end of that highlight. That wasn't... I don't feel like that was a key highlight. I feel like that was a pretty rubbish highlight. Uh, we'll drop back down to balance. They've started well. We haven't. So let's see if we can just get back into this game a little bit more. We are not really creating anything, which is a very big concern at the moment. Wow, they are completely shutting us down. What is going on? Okay, we've got a corner. We can always snatch a set piece. We do love that. Played, gets it back from Castaneda. Pierre comes forward, shoots over the bar. Not a good effort, but at least it's something on as an attempt. It's not very good, but hopefully it gives us a little bit of confidence. Free kick deep in the Sandhausen half. They come back out and try and play it forward. Mulhing comes forward up to Otto, who just manages to keep hold of the ball. Back to Stolz. They're not committing too many men forward. On the edge of the box, so they've got it into Otto. Turn, shoots, he's hit the post. And Felcher can uh, bring this one away. Yeah, it's all Sandhausen at the moment. Is it a personnel thing we've got wrong? Or is the system not working? You would suggest if you're not creating anything, it's generally the system. Which is a big concern. Uh, that was rubbish. It's not good enough. It's completely unacceptable. Hmm, why can a system do so well in one game? And not very well in the other. It should give us a three-channel attack. I'm just wondering what we can do here. I say three-channel attack. I mean five-channel attack. I've just woken up. Um, I wonder if it's because we're not getting on the ball enough. Let's just... Let's try and keep the ball. Let's try and keep the ball a little bit more. And see what we can do. I wonder if as well we're just not... I mean, we're not shooting. We're just not shooting. It's not that we're not shooting from good opportunities. We're just not shooting. Um, it is Akine with a throw and into Yander. Akine gets to the byline into Pedal. Pedal back to Akine and it goes. It's Felcher couldn't get there. No, with a shot, he's hit the bar. Maybe the luck is just deserting us, to be honest, because in the last game we absolutely dominated it, and in this one we we just can't seem to be getting the luck. Let's give him some encouragement instead of just demanding more all the time. It's three shots each. They've just had much better chances. 
Uh, Bitter with a throw. Back to Aquino. Over the top to Izquierdo. Good run. Castaneda. Oh, he's got a score, but Izquierdo is offside. We are on the hour mark, and we've given the young American a run out. And it's not really worked for him. And he's knackered, so we'll bring on Push on for him. 6.2 for Aquino. It's not working for him either, so we're going to bring on... Magule and then Felch will come on to this right hand side. Well, it's not really working for Felcher either, but we'll give him a bit more time. Um, and Marvin Knoll as the ball winner will bring on Nicholas Sterling next to Yander, which is normally my preferred two, but Knoll has been having a good uh, couple of good games recently. So we do, we, we, we are having more shots. They're not amazingly good. And with 15 minutes to go, this is not acceptable, boys. This is just not acceptable. Um, right, we're going to take Thomas Peedle off. We're going to bring on Benjamin Girth. He's going to come up front with his Quiedo. But we're going to play a sort of lobsided thing right here. Um, and then we'll do Felcher off for back here who we are training up to be a wing back I don't know how long he'll be around for he needs to improve his attributes a little bit let's go positive I want to go and get the win 10 minutes to go I am going to ask them to do more wow it's just nothing in this game at all just just nothing absolutely nothing is happening we're not going to hold the ball up and wait for them to come forward now um I guess we could try and use Izquierdo's pace a little bit. Um, I mean, do we go attacking? Do we try and take the get really take the game to them? Let's try. Let's see. I mean, let's see. There's two minutes to go. It just needs one chance, doesn't it? It needs one chance, but I don't think we're going to get it. What a disappointing episode. Back-to-back -back draws. Wow, not a shot on target in the whole game. That is awful. Sandhausen had the better of the match momentum as well. Senga got man of the match for us in centre-back. So I'm just going to have to say I don't like what I saw. Right, we've got some things to work on before that game against Dresden. Dresden is still four points clear. They did... Oh, Regensburg did take points off them. They got a point. Damn, we haven't count... We have not taken advantage of that, have we? So we end the episode with a really poor game. Not a shot on target from either side. We'll, uh, we'll keep having a look at the, the tactical system and see how we're playing. Maybe I was too too quick to change. Um, and maybe Castaneda wasn't the right player to bring in. He got tired very, very quickly. Yeah, not ideal. Um, our highest game win percentage with 100%. Oh, if we just uh, auto-size this. Game win percentage with 100% is Hamza, Anri, and Timmer Koth. But I think they've only played one, yeah, sub appearances, so they probably come on when we're winning. Hamza Sagiri, eight starts, five sub appearances, 69% win percentage. Uh, Pascal Kopp up there as well, and uh, Chindu Akine and Bitter all have above 60%. So maybe there's something to read into that, but. That is the end of the episode. So as I said, get your votes in. Um, we There should be lots of voting that you can still go and vote on. And if you want to make sure something gets put into the club culture, then please do go and vote on it. We've got two games off camera, and then we're back for the game mid-December before the winter break, where we play Dresden in a huge game, and we talk through what is going to be play coming into play next uh, oh, well, the second half of the season, not even next season. And I've just noticed we end the season with a game against Dresden as well. Will that be a title decider? Who knows? Thank you so much for watching. Get your votes in. Get your comments in down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you're new. And loads of FM24 content coming to the channel. Um, and I really hope you enjoy it all. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.